Guys, check this out. If you are a homeowner or a renter and you have an AC unit or a heat pump or a furnace, I have three things right here that you should definitely go out and buy right now that cost less than $40 but could save you thousands if not tens of thousands on your repair cost to your AC unit and service repairs or home repairs. You don't believe me? Let me explain. I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome of course. And to all my longtime subscribers, welcome back. As a DIYer and a homeowner, one of the most overlooked appliances in our home is our AC unit. Uh, however, there are three things that I tell everyone whenever they ask that they should definitely have installed on their AC or they should purchase and have handy for their AC. And this could definitely save you thousands in repairs and service calls. The best thing about these things is that they take less than 10 minutes to install. And the last one that I'm going to talk to you guys about costs less than $10, but it could easily save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So make sure you stay to the end so you can hear what I have to discuss and let's jump into it. Before I jump into the video, I want to let you guys know clearly, again, as usual, I'm not sponsored in this video. Everything that I have here is stuff that I've owned, purchased um, with my own money. And I'll leave links in the description if you guys want to pick any of the items up, which I do suggest you do. So without further ado, let's jump into it and let me talk to you guys. The first thing up on the list is one of these bad boys right here. This is a capacitor. If you guys have ever had your AC cut out in the middle of summer or in the middle of the night and you're up north in the cold, then you guys know that a service technician will charge you a premium to get your unit up and running. Just to break this down, the capacitor is one of the most common devices that goes out. So I suggest that you guys go to your unit right now and see what size capacitor your unit has and buy a spare. All right. And keep it in a safe place. Because when, when your capacitor goes out and it goes bad, and it will, you can get this thing up and running in five minutes. Plus, they only cost around 19 bucks. At least this one does. You can probably get them a little bit cheaper, but just to give you a ballpark, it's around $19. So to see what size uh, capacitor you have in your unit, all you really need to do is go and find your disconnect and disconnect the power. And then you'll be able to remove the electrical panel that serves your AC unit. So what you want to do is once you remove this panel, it's usually only held in by a couple of screws. What you want to do next is you'll find your capacitor and it's going to look something like this. Uh, what you want to do next is you want to go to your capacitor and look for the reading on it. In my case, it says 45 plus 7.5 microfarad plus or minus 5%. What you want to do is you want to put this in to Amazon or Google, whatever it is that you use as your search engine. Just plug it in and it will spit one out that will match your unit. Now, in some cases, you may have two of these, but in my case, I have a dual run, which means this capacitor powers my compressor and my fan outside. What you want to do, pick one up, keep it in your garage, in your house, whatever it is, because to change these things, it only takes about five or 10 minutes. And all you need to do is swap this out, put a new one in, and you'll be up and running in no time. Now listen, if you don't know how to install one and you want a more detailed video on how to replace your capacitor, I'll leave links in the description or there'll be pop-ups around here somewhere. So you'll be able to follow along and replace yours if you need to. The next item I want to talk to you guys about is this little thing right here. So now this is a float switch and this is awesome. And it only costs around 16 bucks as well, kind of like the capacitor. Now, if you don't have one, you need to get one now and you need to get it installed because this will prevent your unit from flooding and damaging your floors and possibly your walls. Mold remediation sucks and you definitely don't want to have to rip up your floor because that's no joke either. Installation of this is as simple as it gets. All this does is screw directly into your unit and just have to run your wires up into your unit and connect it in series with your, with your thermostat. This will cut the power to your thermostat whenever the unit fills up with water. And as a result, your thermostat will turn off and you'll know that your drain line is clogged. The installation of this, if you want more details, I have a video that shows you how to install one of these things, but definitely go outside to your unit and check if you already have one installed. If you do, you're good. You're a third of the way there and this will give you the peace of mind in case your unit backs up, 
you don't have to worry about it flooding and causing damage in your home. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, please don't forget, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, hit the subscribe button, you know all the stuff. It helps out the channel and it keeps me motivated to put out cool DIY videos for you guys and keep the work going as much as I can. Anyway, enough said, back to the video. Once, you, once your float switch has tripped and your drain line is backed up, it's gonna lead me into my next item. You're gonna to have to get your drain flushed. Flushing your condensate drain is something that you should do routinely anyway as a homeowner. A lot of people neglect this and they don't do it. But I always tell people, drop a little bit of vinegar in your drain lines or sometimes they make these tablets that you can put inside the pan which will dissolve any algae that builds up. But it's a good practice, at least as a preventative measure. That way the clogs are few and far between. However, if your, if your unit does clog and you need to get your drain line flushed, you're gonna have to have a technician come out and flush your drain. So what do you do if you want to flush your drain lines? There's several ways to do it. A lot, of, a lot of DIYers use compressed air, nitrogen, a shop vac. However, all these things, not every homeowner has. One thing that I know most, if not all, have a garden hose. I'm going to get a lot of slack for this. People are going to comment on this video and talk about flooding their house by hooking up the hose to their house. Now, the last item that I'm going to talk to you about is this little thing. If you guys need to flush your drain line, there are several options like I talk about. However, I found that this little thing works the best. And you're going to ask me, what is it? Well, it's just a three quarter inch PVC fitting with a garden hose attachment on the end. And the way this works is one end will connect to your PVC drain and the other end will connect to your garden hose. All you need to do is turn on your garden hose slowly and boom, your drain lines are clean as a whistle. Give it a couple minutes, let the water do its work and it's gonna flush out all that gunk and stuff out of your drain and get your drain lines super clean. The cool thing is this item here, it costs around four or five bucks. I'll leave links in the description, but if you need to get one in a pinch, you can always go to your hardware store and they usually sell them in the sprinkler section. Once again, flushing your drain will definitely save you a service call and again, potential thousands in water damage and repair. So all in all, let's wrap this thing up and recap. The first thing I want you to go ahead and get is a capacitor. And once again, if you need the details on how to replace one, check out my videos, should be links in the description or a pop-up. Your capacitor is gonna cost you around 18, 20, somewhere around there um, for that. The next item was your float switch. Again, this is around $16 and your adapter is gonna cost you around five bucks, which means for around a grand total of 40 bucks, you can be ready to potentially save you guys yourself thousands, if not, tens of thousands in service calls and repair costs. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a no brainer to me. That's it, that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the content as usual. And please let me know in the comments, leave a comment if you guys have used any of these items here. And maybe you have any other suggestions for me. Please feel free to let me know. I look forward to hearing the comments and you know I'll engage with you guys in the comments. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.